First updates now, FTC is produced in partnership with PTC. On Friday, May 29th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, come check out the incredible submissions for the Robots to the Rescue Challenge at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. PTC will be providing giveaways for both submitted robots and for those who watch live. Don't forget that you can register for Onshape for free and start designing right in your browser at onshape.com forward slash education dash plan. Let's move on to our AMA interview with Sanford from the team Negative Resistance. So for those of you who are just tuning in, um, FTC 8802 Negative Resistance is one of the top teams from Washington, and they've consistently ranked in our FTC Top 25 poll. And Sanford is also the founder of Long Robotics, the, a company that supplies parts to FTC teams. They're specifically known for their linear slides and that are compatible with a variety of building systems. Before we ask any questions, you had mentioned that there are some new products that are launching on Long Robotics. Would you like to talk about those? Yeah, so there are two new products that will be coming out sometime in the near future. Um, they're both in various stages of completion. Um, the first one is, as some of you may have heard of already, the um, standalone seven millimeters slash eight millimeter Rex, kind of confusing acronym because Rex is out outer diameter, but, um, planetary gearbox. So this gearbox will allow teams to upgrade their traditional like um, spur gearboxes that they may have a huge stockpile from that they may not be using anymore um, into the newer planetary gearboxes, um, as well as provide teams with the option of a seven millimeter hex output shaft, which is um, very robust compared to some of the other ones. And um, I haven't tested exactly the Torx settings, but you may be able to directly 3D print because that's something that I've definitely taken advantage of with things like 3.8 hex and half inch hex. Um, and the second product that will be coming out soon is the analog gyroscope. Um, so this analog gyroscope outputs a 0 to 3.3 volt heading, or uh, 3.3 volt voltage um, that corresponds to 0 to 360 or um, to heading of the robot. And um, over the analog port, the rev hub is able to read these um, this heading much faster than over, uh, say, I squared C. Um, and this allows your loop times to be significantly faster with, and still use an IMU, which is or a gyroscope in this case, um, for things like odometry. Um, so you would only need a two wheel odometry plus an IMU rather than a three wheel. So this reduces your mechanical complexity of your system. Awesome. Uh, and I'm sure that a lot of people I know, at least in the FTC Discord, are very excited about those products. So it's going to be interesting to see how they affect robots in the future. So let's go ahead and start asking questions. We took questions in the Discord, so we will ask those. If you have any questions for Sanford, make sure to tag at first updates now in the chat, and we will try to get to it. So starting off, what inspired you to begin Long Robotics? Um, well, I first started Long Robotics because, um, like, the ball bearing slides were definitely, like, seemed like the way FTC was shifting in towards of, like, lightweight linear extension. But, like, in the 2018 season, I built an all-black robot, which we powder coated the whole robot. Um, and, like, you can't really powder coat slides, so I really wanted to get them anodized. And then, so I started looking around, and um, ultimately, it ended up being... I found that it was economically like viable in order to get them black anodized. And so I ended up um, doing them mainly for myself and some other teams that really liked them in black. And then it just shifted from there. I love how it wasn't just for the whole patterns, but it was mainly for the anodized black. <laughs> yeah. All right, go ahead, Ingrid. Uh, so how big has Long Robotics grown? And do you have any buyers that are outside of FT, uh, first teams? Um, so Long Robotics is still fairly small. It's just me currently that's working on it. Um, I do have um, my friend Gavin who's working with me on the analog gyro. Um, he's working mainly on the electrical and the programming aspects of like the firmware aspects of the analog gyro while I'm taking care of like the hardware and the casing and then the distribution. Um, other than that, everything else has just been uh, me working on it myself. It's been pretty fun along the way. So where do you see Long Robotics um, several years from now? Like, how do you see it growing? Um, I mainly intend to expand my product lineup and like um, 
adding more products that I find useful. A lot of my current products have come out of like my past four years of experience in what I wished there would be in FTC. And that's where a lot of it has come from. Like this year we used um, the Rev IMU in the Rev Hub um, with a two wheel odometry system rather than a three wheel because um, having an accurate heading was like very, very important to us because um, if your heading is off, then your X, Y position is also off. And um, we weren't particularly good at tuning um, odometry down as some of the other like established teams are. So building three wheel would have taken a lot of time for us to really like tune down to um, the precision that we would have wanted. Cool. Uh, what is your typical process for coming up with new parts? You touched on this a little bit, but what's also the production part of it? Like, how do you go about that? Um, the, the first part is coming up with like the product, I guess, is like, what, what do you want to bring to market? Like what issues does it solve? And then after you come up with that, you have to think about like whether or not it is like the market is like there for such a product. Cause like if you, create a product for just like five teams, then it might not necessarily like pan out because you have to, you have to have some amount of scale in order to like get manufacturers to actually make your parts. Um, so there's that aspect. And then another aspect is, um, I guess the design of the parts and like designing for manufacturing. Um, I have a pretty good idea or a pretty good understanding of like um, different manufacturing methods and the limitations and how to design around them. Um, so there's that design. And then once you have your design that you think is manufacturable, um, you have to go find a manufacturer. And you, generally, I try to go find multiple manufacturers and send them off, um, send them off the CAD files and then get a quote on from them for a specific quantity. And then you have to work out which one you want to do and like samples and those things. Nice. Manufacturing process right there. Um, how did you go about working with international suppliers and taking care of the whole production process? Um, so working with international suppliers, um, it's just definitely a lot more affordable to do it overseas than in the US. Um, just like comparing like minimum wage is very different because the conversion of currency is very different. Um, there's a little bit of economics in, involved in that. Um, so that, that was one of the main shifts. And also just the prevalence of like manufacturing is much more common in China compared to the US. Um, Cause we've primarily become like a pretty service dominated economy versus China, like manufacturing and those things is just everywhere. And there are just tons of manufacturers out there that will do like all sorts of different niches. Like you can find one manufacturer that specializes in one specific thing and you can go to them for their experience in one specific part, I guess, and then others which are experienced in other places. So you can really like gain and leverage the experience of a lot of different manufacturers. Awesome. Uh, where do you see long robotics several years from now? Um, for several years from now, I mainly hope to just expand my um, product lineup. Also, um, I need to judge my inventory quantities better. Um, this year it was pretty rough because I had no previous data on like how well things would sell and the quantities I would need. Um, I went into the season going like, if I sell 300 slides, I will be pretty impressed. And then 300 slides sold out in like under half a month. Um, so yeah. Wow. So uh, I guess I think this is a repeat question. Uh, so moving on to the next one. Uh, so what is happening to 8802 negative resistance in the coming season? Will there be another team that's continuing the legacy of 8802? All right. So and that was uh, asked by Appleby from uh, the FTC Discord. So 8802, you may have known it was just me and my friend who were both seniors. I mean, we're both graduating. So as of right now, 8802 does not have a continuation plan. So it'll be retiring and not returning for the next season. Um, so there will not be a successor to ADO2 at this moment. Um, maybe in the future, if I decide to mentor a team, it may come back. But um, as of right now, I have no plans.
Has your experience as a Discord mod had any impact on long robotics and what types of items you stock? Um, being a moderator on Discord hasn't had a, I would say, direct impact on whatever products I have sold, but um, being on the Discord has definitely had an impact because I've gauged a lot of, well, I've definitely learned a whole lot from a lot of people and their experiences on the Discord. And um, from those experiences, as well as gauging like what other people like are looking for and what the advantages and disadvantages of certain parts or different processes are, um, I've, those have definitely influenced my just like products that I offer and the designs of the products. Um, are your suppliers aware of your age? From this is from Elon, uh, FTC with a bunch of numbers. <laughs> um, I don't believe my suppliers are aware of my age at this moment, um, but I, I would like to go visit my suppliers in China um, sometime. So that'd be interesting. Interesting. So uh, I got a next question from uh, Robin Banks uh, from the Discord asking, why have you listed a waterproof servo on your store, uh, Water Game? Well, the waterproof servo, um, waterproof or water resistance is an unintended consequence of the servo, I guess. Um, but mainly I found the servo uh, in the previous season and I used, they, they just slowly took over our robot with the servos that we used. Because um, I, I did like, I ordered a wide array of servos to use on a robot because um, I wasn't, I didn't really want to spend like $90 on a servo. So I just got a bunch of different, like cheaper servos. And I was like really impressed with this one. And we ended up using this on a virtual four bar, which was really fast. And I was really impressed with it. And then they slowly got added to different mechanisms. And soon we had like eight of them, which were these servos. And like the price to performance was kind of just really good in my opinion. So I ended up deciding to actually source and sell them to other teams. Nice. So Ocean from uh, FTC 16404, uh, he's asking, how do you intend to compete? How do you, how do you intend to continue expanding log robotics? Um, currently I'm trying to spread out, like diversify my product lineup um, away from just linear slides. Um, but after that, I intend to continue building upon the linear slides and we'll probably release a new version at some point. Um, pr probably not for next season, but maybe for the season after that, that will probably look uh, different. Interesting. <laughs> So this question doesn't really have a person that was uh, that that submitted this, or at least I don't see it. Um, how do you go about doing research and development and getting in contact with your suppliers? You kind of touched on this a little bit, but you want to expand on it a little bit more. Um, research and development is really um, mainly just working CAD. I do a lot of my work in CAD, and then um, sending off the CAD to, to quotes or making a um, prototype, like a 3D printed prototype or a CNC cut prototype um, myself. That, that's mainly so the process. Do you have a, like a robot that you test this on or a particular um, thing that you work with to do your testing to see if it actually follows through with what you were expecting? This year I actually used uh, my competition robot as our testing platform. So all of our parts were used um, on our, our, our own robot computing. So. Um, that's where I could like validate whether or not there were certain issues or not. Cool. What advice would you give yourself if you were to start long robotics over? And that was OCN from the fun discord. Well, it's definitely a double edged sword, but, um, the, the dealing with quantities and, and that stuff, um, I didn't scale my <laughs> quantities enough, like after the first and second ones, um, like going through the first um, set and then the second set, I didn't scale that enough to meet the amount of demand because I, I just did not estimate it properly. Um, so that would have been like a thing I would have wanted to redo if I could. 
Um, that's one of the large things, I guess, on the business side. Nice. So I think our next question is from Nate uh, from Team 4466. Uh, and he's asking, uh, do you see yourself having a market outside of competition robotics? Uh, is this a consideration when you have to, when you decide to carry new products in the long robotics store? Um, so mainly right now, I'm just targeting towards FTC teams and the needs of FTC teams. Um, I don't expect there to be a outside market currently for my products. Um, in the future, I might look at this, but that's still down the road. Gotcha. Alugia7 asks, from... oh, what sorry, happened with the battery in Washington State Finals? Um, <laughs> Well, we wanted our autonomous to go twice as fast. So we put two better. <laughs> zoom, zoom. Um, yeah, no, um, I don't know exactly how, but there was a battery set on top of one of our batteries. Um, and I'm not sure how no one noticed it until the game started. Um, so I guess it was just there. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't know, finals match one, um, negative resistance, at Washington State, negative resistance had two batteries on the robot. And as Miss Ingrid will tell you, that is a red card because you are not allowed to have two batteries on your robot. Um, so they lost that match, but then they ended up getting matches two and three. Um, and it was kind of funny watching the battery fall off the robot during autonomous. Um, all right, on to the next question. Uh, Dzig has said, asks, uh, Sanford, who inspired you to start your business at such a young age? Um, well, I've always been like pretty economically inclined. Um, <laughs> when I was very young, I um, remember buying and selling Legos as a thing. Um, and, like, I guess that experience has always just stuck with me. Um, yeah. Uh, so our next question is from uh, Elon, and he's asking, are you competing in VMTI? Um, I am not competing in VMTI. Um, we were considering going to the actual MTI, but then looking at the current situation of like the pandemic, um, we ultimately decided to just not, because <clears throat> going from Washington to Maryland is a long trip, and um, in these situations, travel isn't exactly encouraged. <laughs> Um, for VMTI, um, we never ended up fully completing our version three robots, um, mainly time and also just effort, I guess. Um, also, um, I guess self quarantining because the, the field and the robots in my basement versus while Gavin is at his house. So, yeah. And, and awards were never our strong suit, although some may argue we had the best notebook in Northern California. <laughs> so, uh, our... what is. Go ahead. DZIG says, uh, What is the largest benefit of your products over other products, such as those offered by Masumi? Um, so compared to Misumi, um, the like most like tangible advantage, I suppose, like that's not just personal preference, is the the different mounting patterns or mounting holes. Um, there are substantially more mounting holes compared to them, and they line up onto a eight millimeter spacing, which a lot of build systems seem to be shifting towards. Um, so it should be compatible with a lot more parts that teams already have without needing to drill new holes into slides. Um, drilling holes into ball bearing slides is risky because the metal shavings can get between the ball bearings and then cause issues down the road. Um, yeah. Nice. Uh, uh, yeah. So how does the analog gyro uh, compare to the polling rate of things like rev encoders? Um, I'm not super familiar with the programming and electrical aspects. Um, that's mainly Gavin's expertise, but um, the analog gyro is outputting at a rate faster than the rev hub can like read, so it won't be bottlenecked. Got it. That's good. And ask uh, Sanford, do you plan to IPO? Um, <laughs> I, I do not have a plan to IPO. Ah. Oh. 
So we can't buy stock in your company right now. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. What What if we wanted to? Well, I'm just like, Sanford, I want to give you money. Can I have some of your company? Um, I guess it depends on how much money. But... All right, we'll talk. We'll talk <laughs> later. I just want to put you on the spot there. All right. I've got twenty bucks for you, man. <laughs> All right, and FTC Yogi asked, uh, what can teams do work on during summer break? And I'm assuming that they're asking for your advice, Sanford. Um, one of the big things that uh, my team, in, in my experience, we always like to do during off season is build our drivetrain. Um, like for 8802 and on 8103, we always built our drivetrain in the off season before. Um, so that was our mechanism drive. So that was always good to get solid before um, and get like experience on building a drivetrain. Um, after that, um, I guess it's pretty popular now to get used to Roadrunner and those pathing for auto because autonomous is pretty huge points. Um, slightly biased here, but um, some there is um, a prevalence of linear slides in a lot of FTC games. So um, getting good with linear slides and stringing them because stringing them can be a challenge. Um, is also a good skill to have in FTC. Um, and mainly just getting familiar with your hardware and especially like just what parts are out there. I know when I was starting out, um, a huge bottleneck that I saw in myself and in like a lot of new people I was trying to teach um, at my old school was that um, people just didn't know what parts were out there. So like getting familiar with like what parts are available and what parts do what is very important because like there are some designs that you might not have known were possible with certain parts um, are actually possible. I think yeah. that's going to wrap up our Ask Me Anything portion with Sanford. Um, Sanford, where can people contact you if they have any additional questions? Um, if you have any additional comments or suggestions for products, you can reach me on the FTC Discord server. Um, currently, I am one of the admins on the FTC Discord, um, although I will be stepping down in the near future as I will be graduating. First Updates Now FTC is produced in partnership with PTC. Don't forget that you can register for Onshape for free and start designing right in your browser at onshape.com forward slash education dash plan. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.